I was coming back from a horse show with my son in 1980, and I saw the sign that said, airplane rides, five cents a pound. I was much lighter then, so I could afford it. I was 14 years old. A family friend took me out to an airport, uh, and I just never forgot that experience. For the first time, Negro aviation cadets were being groomed to fly warplanes of a unit which was then a unit and fought only, the 99th Pursuit Squadron. Uh, you do have a compass rose here, okay? Possession of the director. You do have a climb and attitude indicator here, and this is an altitude indicator. Our chapter is named for John Green. He uh, was a uh, tremendous pioneer uh, in aviation at a time when it was extremely difficult for black people to have an opportunity to fly. He not only flew an airplane, but he was uh, the first uh, black individual to own and operate an airfield in America. Like most kids, I used to put together airplane models, but never in my mind did I think that I would fly an airplane because I didn't see anybody flying airplanes that looked like me. But the guy that wound up being the pilot of this Cessna 172, he had on a pair of bib overalls, he had on a plaid shirt, and he looked like he had just gotten off a tractor. And he actually had because the tractor was sitting down at the end of the runway. I looked at this guy and I said, if he can do it, I can do it. And I've been flying ever since. These men were pioneers of a venture so new that you who stand here before me now, after three years, may still be considered forerunners in the movement which has given you a place in the fighting men of the sky. If we want to look at how bad the discrimination was, let's look at the Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, the whole Tuskegee Airmen experiment was not an experiment to show that blacks could fly airplanes or that blacks should serve in the military in an elite organization. It was put in place to show that we did not have the mental capacity or the physical aptitude to be able to handle complex machinery like an airplane. Well, clearly, they were wrong. Actually, here in America, uh, the number of airline pilots that are captains are very, very small, really minuscule. Uh, to the top. I think it is about 2%, I believe. So even here, there are not uh, a great many uh, pilots who are practicing as professionals for airlines. Well, Gus McLeod was the first person to fly an open cockpit airplane to the North Pole. That is the airplane that Gus McLeod flew to the North Pole. Janet Bragg. We have a chapter of the Black Pilots of America, which is actually named after uh, Janet Bragg. Again, another pioneer in aviation and a female. When we look at the way things are today, Prejudice is still here today, but there's knowledge within black Americans as well as white Americans as well as Hispanic Americans that you can do anything that you want to do given the opportunity and given the proper training. And we look at the pioneers in black aviation as being a cornerstone to show that that can happen. This is a picture of John Green as he's working on one of the aircraft engines. That's a huge monster there. The red plane there that's banking, just banking left. Wonderful. You got to be in an airplane to do that. That is a really wonderful experience. That is a cool experience. <laughs> that's what that is. Uh, we'll be pushing back from the gate here in a few minutes. Flying time, two hours, 58 minutes en route. Uh, looks like uh, flight plan time about two hours and 10 minutes. So we got to be there way early.